today, Rinpoche gave a very clear explanation of why compassion is important at the yeah, yeah. beginning, middle, and, okay. and end. Yeah, yeah. Paper. <laughs> Tomakejola <laughs> Nabatan <laughs> 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 Do Maluba, do you? Quichuane, tell a rally, which is Sigent Taji, Quidonel, do you? Quichuane, and he chamber a rally, which is on the Cote de Mazina, Cote de Mazina, Tiba Chambo, Mesubi, Shedder, he gene Toma, Kichua, you know us, what the Bado, Toma Kichua, Zignan, Tambo, the Water, eh? Okay, so yeah. Yeah. And now we begin with the importance of compassion in the beginning. And we look at Jayan Sheba's commentary. He states there's four categories uh, in this section. Um, so we begin with the first category. Uh, there's not a, a name, a heading name, but so it's just broken down, breaks, breaks this down into four sections. Uh, so this is the first section. Once your mind is moved by great compassion, you will definitely make the commitment to free all living beings from cyclic existence. If your compassion is weak, you will not. Therefore, compassion is important in the beginning because feeling responsible to free all beings requires great compassion. And because if you do not take on this responsibility, you are not ranked as a Mahayana practitioner. Uh, um, so this is the first point uh, that's made among the four. And it is uh, the first reason why great compassion or compassion is important uh, in the beginning. Dixon. <laughs> Shanju O Shanon to Joanes, O Shanon to Joanne, may so go on be what do Ruayen was. And now, Pana, O Shanon to Joa, that was O part on set on the Marbe. Lesser. O Shanon to Joanne, may so go on, so go on with the modern door. Lesser. So go on with the modern door, the den, eh? No, O part you say what you are is Ruayeno. Tejendo. Shanju Sembi, Nizhi Chamber, Tibachimoyantaba, 
Do be hot and raw, you know. Tis chamber to what a Tiba Jimby Tiba Jimby, you know what a Tiba Jimby and a Tiba Jimby and a Sajut and Langa to the Moto, Tis Jimbo to do your ears. Tis in to Shanju Sambi Shanju Sambi Shanju Sambi Tiba. Shanju Sambi Ni Jimbo and Tiba Jimbo. Number two, we find a quote from the Aksayamati Sutra. Um, it, uh, it's a pronouncement of Lord Buddha. Uh, so it says, Furthermore, Venerable Shariputra, the great compassion of the Bodhisattvas is inexhaustible. Why? Because it is a prerequisite. Venerable Shariputra, just as the movement of the breath is a prerequisite for the life force of a human being, the great <coughs> compassion of the Bodhisattva <coughs> is the prerequisite <coughs> for correctly reaching the Mahayana. So it's showing how important um, uh, this great compassion is. It, it compares it to breathing and how necessary breathing is for life. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. It, it, it shows uh, how important uh, the great compassion is because it compares it to breathing. Uh, in order for someone to stay alive, he or she has to continue to breathe. Life ends if there's no breathing. Uh, likewise, uh, if one um, has this great compassion, uh, the prerequisite for the Mahayana uh, is, is there. Um, so it's without that um, great compassion, there is no Mahayana. So it's a prerequisite just as breathing in and out is a prerequisite for staying alive. Um, so, uh, what does this mean? Um, so, <coughs> great compassion uh, for correctly reaching the Mahayana. So, any among the Mahayana paths, so any of the five paths, the path of accumulation, the path of preparation, the path of seeing, the path of meditation, the path of no more learning, any of those ten bodhisattva grounds that start at the path of seeing, um, all require, as a prerequisite, this, this compassion to be present. Um, so it shows how indispensable it is, uh, and that's uh, category number two in Jayan Sheba's commentary, which just as a translator's note is a separate text that's not in English that we're using. ね、ジャンベジンパンパス。あの、ジジンジャンベヨンソバイジロンジャンベジンパンパ。ラッサ。ハイボ。ね、シャンチュセンバナジ。ショバトンバネ。ヒジチェンボレス。ヒジチェンボウ
its object is, le is living beings. Um, so uh, the object of one's compassion, what is, who, who or what is one compassionate towards? And here the answer is all sentient beings, living beings. Digson. So that was three. Shibalanjubi <laughs> Two uh, so number four, thus compassion is the basis of engaging in the deeds because when you see that you will not live up to your commitment without training in the two vast collections, you set forth about the difficult worth of amassing these uh, vast collections. Uh, so uh, when you, this great compassion gives you um, inspiration to then want to amass these difficult collections. Okay. So here it's these two collections are speaking of the <coughs> collection of, of merit and the collection of exalted wisdom. So these two are necessary to have, to gather in order to become a Buddha. Um, so um, a mass, there's a large amount of this that has to be collected. So this compassion inspires you to do that work that's hard to do. Dixon. Difficult work of amassing these vast collections. So those four are done. Okay, so now, uh, so that completes the section on the importance of compassion in the beginning in Jayan Sheba's four categories. The next is the importance of compassion in the middle. Jayan Sheba states there's five categories in this one. What <laughs> And <laughs> 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 Um, so the first of the five deals with uh, um, the potential 
of losing uh, one's uh, spirit of in, in awakening uh, and the, then falling to the Hinayana, the potential for that. Uh, so this is number one. You may develop the spirit of enlightenment at one time and then engage in the bodhisattva deeds. But when you see that living beings are innumerable and act improperly, that the training is very difficult and limitless, and that you need an immeasurable length of time, you may lose heart and fall into the Hinayana. Uh, so this is number one, the potential for um, first uh, having this a spirit of awakening and this desire to become a Buddha for the sake of all sentient beings and then becoming disheartened uh, um, because uh, of sentient beings acting improperly or acting uh, um, badly, uh, negatively, uh, and recognizing there are so many of them and then uh, losing, um, becoming disheartened. And then if this happens, then you fall to the lesser vehicle, you fall to the Hinayana. So here's a potential um, downfall here. This is the first category. Less <laughs> Chippe これ Yes. The Gom Nipa Nietzsche? What the God need the world, eh? Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, number two is quite long. However, by accustoming yourself to uh, increasingly greater compassion that is not just a one time development, you will become less concerned with your own happiness or suffering and are not discouraged at providing. Uh, let me try this again. However, by accustoming yourself to increasingly greater compassion, that is not just a one-time development, you become less concerned with your own happiness or suffering and are not discouraged at providing others' welfare. Therefore, you easily accomplish all the collections. And we have a quote from uh, Kamala Shila's uh, stages of meditation. So it's saying that it becomes easier um, as you develop this. It becomes more, as you become more familiar with these ideas, it becomes easier. And accomplishing these collections previously mentioned, those two collections that are difficult to achieve, 
become easy to achieve. And uh, so we have this quote, because bodhisattvas are moved by great compassion, they diligently strive to be very helpful to others without considering themselves. Consequently, they engage in accumulating the two collections, which is very difficult, tiring, and requires a long period of time. As the seal of engaging in the developing the power of faith, Sutra says, one who has great compassion will always take on a life of suffering and will always give up a happy life in order to help all living beings uh, to mature. Um, so this is uh, all part of number two. Um, so it, it's saying that uh, the Bodhisattva is so moved by great compassion that he or she uh, will endure suffering if necessary for others. Um, it's not saying does it it, um, just as a translator's note, just by the way it's translated, um, it doesn't, it's not saying um, that they're choosing uh, uh, to suffer, um, um, choosing to suffer uh, for others always. It's that they're willing to suffer if it means helping others. Uh, so it's not this idea of martyrdom. Um, that, so I just want to make sure its translation doesn't sound like that. Uh, it, it, one will always take on a life of suffering and will always give up a happy life in order to help all living beings to mature. That's showing the power of that great compassion that makes them willing to suffer if it means helping someone else. Um, it doesn't mean they always do that just because of some sort of martyrdom. Uh, so that translation can sometimes bring about a wrong idea. So I just wanted to clarify that. Deek Sonam Chit. Oh, <laughs> And <laughs> And the So, where we are now is a very um, uh, excellent place for practice. Even those bodhisattvas. Uh, who are dwelling in pure lands, uh, such as Tashita, pure land, um, or any of these other pure lands where bodhisattvas abide. Um, these bodhisattvas don't have suffering. It's a very wonderful place. Um, but they actually make prayers to be born where we are. Um, and the reason for this is because in a pure land, there's not really any kind of inspiration. There's no reason to want to uh, develop your compassion because there's no suffering or anything to see. So they make prayers to be born where we are because bodhisattvas then are able to see suffering. They're able to hear about suffering. They're able to um, have uh, um, access to sentient beings who are being born again and again and who are having to undergo hardship. And because uh, these bodhisattvas then have access to sentient beings who are suffering, and experience suffering and see this suffering, 
it inspires them and it strengthens their great compassion and it makes their compassion stronger which then makes their bodhicitta or their spirit of awakening stronger which then makes it easier to go through the and accumulate the two collections of exalted wisdom and merit um, so it by increasing this great compassion it increases everything else and increases uh, one's um, ability to amass those collections and then one can quickly uh, achieve uh, the state of Buddhahood um, so we can see that it says uh, if bodhis it says here in number three if bodhisattvas engage like this it, like this in something that is extremely difficult to do they will fully and quickly complete the collections they will definitely attain the, uh, they will fully complete the collections so um, it's difficult to do but these um, when it's fueled by great compassion um, it's quick um, because um, you're motivated to do it, you're inspired to do it, um, so you quickly attain the state of Buddhahood, it's basically saying. Uh, so, uh, and this, this is why. So, Pure Land Bodhisattvas wish to be where we are so that they can strengthen their own, their realizations because they have all beings around them who are suffering and have needs that they can fulfill and, and, and work with, work towards um, fulfilling. Digsun. they will definitely attain the high state of omniscience. Um, so here, that's number four, point four, uh, meaning that great compassion, from great compassion, Buddhahood will arise. A Buddha has, is omniscient. Um, so, uh, from great compassion, omniscience arises. The Gorim, the year. Yeah. Mm. ザレベネ uh, so number five, um, therefore the sole root of a Buddha's qualities is compassion. So all of the excellent qualities of a Buddha come from compassion. Uh, so this is number five, Diksum. Oh, <laughs> Uh, so now uh, we move on to the importance of compassion at the end. And Rimche said there's a lot there. So, so Sheva Damba, Ni Saji Ni Dua. In Shantu Jesem Dan, the Ninji Chapagar. Tama Kisho, the Tama Kisho Munta, Munsana Munti, the Ne, Neba de la Cheba Ninja Dan, Chabra Do, and the Ninja de Shantu Sela, Dan B. T. Dambas, and then Ninja de Shantu Sento, what the Dan B. T. and the Sergeant Hina in Yawuris. Okay, so, um, so 
number three category is the importance of compassion at the end. Um, and this has two major sections. The first is the actual, um, it's just called actual, uh, so the actual compassion. Um, and the second is um, showing how because uh, compassion and the spirit of awakening are the essence of the practices, one needs to be very careful. Uh, careful. So the first, the actual um, compassion, at the, it would maybe the compassion at the end, there's seven categories in this first one. And number two, there are three categories. Tama Um, so, so the importance of compassion at the end. So we're going first category is the actual. Um, and uh, so this is the first. Based on the power of great compassion, Buddhas, even when they reach their goal, do not abide in the peace like Hinayana pr practitioners, but continue to work for the welfare of beings as long as space remains. For without compassion, Buddhas would be like Shravakas. Uh, and then we have a quote from Kamala Shila's Stages of Meditation. So here uh, it's saying that it's because of great compassion that uh, when a Bodhisattva practitioner or a Mahayana practitioner reaches his or her goal, meaning becomes a Buddha, once they become a Buddha, he or she doesn't just stay in nirvana or in liberation and just abide there like a Hinayanist. His or her great compassion forces them to go work for the sake of other beings, uh, so to work for the welfare of beings um, as long as space remains, so forever. As long as there are sentient beings, um, this great compassion pushes the Buddha to work for their welfare um, because without, if that compassion wasn't present, they would fall into that attachment to peace that the Hinayana practitioner has. Um, so that attachment to peace is negated by the great compassion because the great compassion disallows the Buddha to stay in nirvana and just abide in bliss and forces him or her to go help others. Um, so uh, this is category um, number one. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, so when they reach their... Dig, okay, digs are in check. That's number one. 
Okay, so number two, I just want to make sure I'm not mixing up the uh, outline numbers. Okay, so number two, uh, we have a quote from Kamala Shila's uh, second stages of meditation. It says, Since the Bhagavan Buddhas are imbued with great compassion, they remain until the end of the realm in which beings dwell, even though they have attained the complete perfection of their own aims. Uh, the lung ni Nika <laughs> So, Kamala Shila's uh, second stages of meditation says, Since the Bhagavan Buddhas are imbued with great compassion, they remain until the end of the realm in which beings dwell, even though they have attained the complete perfection of their own aims. So even though a Buddha has completed the perfection of his or her own aims, uh, all completions are there, uh, they do not abide in nirvana. They go to fulfill the aims of others uh, as well. Even though they have obtained the complete perfection of their own aims, their great compassion makes them dwell and remain until the end of the realm in which beings dwell. So until there are no longer beings. And I'm, I was asking Rinpoche if the second quote within it is connected. I, it's not read yet, but Rinpoche might add it on. I'm not sure. Very much. That's one but tiny bomba, hinge it damp on this tiny bomba. Tiny bomba, hinge it damp on what in Tenma and then somewhat the young doses that join then the join then the Naji, Manebin and the David Juna, Hinge Chamber, you know, less so. Hinge Chamber, you know, what the what the shares or what the somebody. Uh, number three, the sole cause of the non-abiding nirvana of the Bhagavans is great compassion. Uh, so non-abiding nirvana, meaning that they do not stay in nirvana. They don't abide there. They don't remain there. Because of great compassion, they help others. Three. Mm-hmm. What the cause of the tap? Example, my baby, example. And then, example, Tambo, Lodu, Toma, Toma Kitcher, or Sabinaton, Pato Kitcher, or Chuluton, Tama Kitcher, and Debum Paper, Paper Kitcher, or Taras, Cassitini, Jayulu, two persons, the Sabinaton, the Pilla, Chunda, Yandendo, Longshu Nella, Paper Juban, the Juba, the Sidak, Toma, Nizi, Toba, Juba, the Surendua, Pena, Lotula, Toma. Ketchup 
भादो के चो चुले ताबो थामा के चो जब मैं बताबो एक जंबो अन्य तुम्हा के चो नहीं जे भादो के चो आ अन्य अन्य शांतुक सेंटो से इंसार विशिष्ट थामा के चो जब मैं बा अन्य तार सांझे जो लोटो लाया तो तब बाजू तो के चो आ सांझे जो लोटो लाया तो तब बाजू के चो नहीं जे Nijin yimba padin dawata bi sun te sa. Nijin yimba padin dawata bi sun doos. Padin dawata bi oman juba ngu te mar be. Kansi te ni jayu lo tu pan sun te sabran ta na pila chun na yuan rin to. Long shui ne la pinpa chun ta bun dwe juba. Te shi da toma nji jit te ba jin te rin to te a. De padin dawata bi sun te sun doos. Nijin yimba. Ya. De jipa. What is your role? So number four, the glorious Chandrakirti taught that just as seeds, water, and ripening are important in the beginning, middle, and end of a harvest, similarly, similarly, compassion is important in the beginning, middle, and end of the harvest of Buddhahood. His commentary on the middle way, so the entrance to the middle way, Ramshi is saying. So here we quoted this before, and uh, now we see it right here. Compassion alone is regarded as the seed of a conqueror's excellent harvest. As water for its development, as the maturation in a state of long enjoyment, therefore at the beginning I praise compassion. It's a little different. I'm going to read this translation also, just so we have that on, on tape again. Um, of Buddha's abundant crop, compassion is the seed. <coughs> it's like the moisture bringing increase and is said to ripen in the state of lasting happiness. Therefore, at the beginning, I celebrate, to begin, I celebrate compassion. Okay. That's a karma jujire. What is jujire? Yeah. Jujire? What is jujire, mother? Okay. Yeah. All right, so remember, I said we'll end here, uh, and we'll table it till next time, he said. We'll do it next time. Uh, so... Let's do the concluding mandala offering and dedication prayers. And thank you all, as always, for coming. To Chana Rinpoche, Shada Sobaldu. The fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha land and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure realm. I dedicate whatever virtues I have collected for the benefit of the teachings and of all sentient beings, and in particular for the essential teachings of Venerable Lozandrapa to shine forever. I send forth this jeweled mandala to you, precious Guru. I dedicate all this virtue to emulate the knowledge of the hero Manjushri and likewise Samantabhadra as well. With whatever dedication is praised as supreme by all the conquerors who traverse the three times, I also dedicate all my roots of virtue for the sake of auspicious deeds. In that pure land surrounded by snowy mountains, source of all benefit and happiness, all powerful Avogateshvara, Tenzin Yatso, may you stay until samsara is in. I pray for the long life of the precious Kensar Wandak upholder of scriptural and realizational doctrines, the spiritual friend who trained extensively in the five great philosophical texts with exceptional wisdom and perseverance. Tu ji rimache guti shabi denu nang atsu larun chemo kanga chiro nang. Tu ji tu ji. Tu che na. Shere sobo du. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Shere's teaching is so clear. Such intense, difficult material, but so clear.